Hi, I'm Davier. Look what I have here. This is a 7603 oscilloscope, uh, obviously made by Tektronix. And look at this thing, it's just beautiful. I'm in love with the 7000 series oscilloscope, um, oscilloscope's main frames that uh, were actually, this one, this particular model was actually made from 1972 all the way to 1990, so a very, very long time. But, I mean, I love those uh, mainframe oscilloscopes because you can pretty much customize uh, based on your needs, you can pretty much build your own oscilloscope. Uh, there is a wide, wide variety of uh, different plugins that fit the 7000 series. Uh, you can have, you know, up to four channels by using uh, two dual uh, vertical amplifiers uh, plugins. You can have uh, even uh, you know, a spectrum analyzer plugin, you can have also a logic analyzer plugin, and also a digitizing plugin. So you can pretty much transform this analog oscilloscope to a digital oscilloscope by using different plugins. There is so much opportunity with those oscilloscopes. Uh, it also has readout capability, uh, radical illumination, obviously, uh, but readout can actually be uh, really useful uh, to just read on the screen what uh, your settings are. So it's beautiful. And um, you know, all the plugins available uh, is just a start of a collection right there. <laughs> I don't want to say anything, but uh, I already have four uh, plugins. Ah, man, I couldn't resist. So this version that I have here. Um, it's a later version of the 7603 oscilloscope because I noticed it has a fan on the back, so it's a later, um, later production. They added a fan to, you know, uh, solve a little overheating problem on the uh, low voltage section um, part of the power supply, so they fitted a little fan that blows air to uh, the past transistors on the back. Um, there is also a mod that um, it was actually official. The mod uh, to add a fan was officially provided by uh, Tektronix. That um, you know you could you could buy the fan and the assembly to fit it yourself. That's great. Uh, anyways, it um, this oscilloscope has uh, the option seventy seven, which is the P seven phosphor um, CRT with the uh, Spectrum Analyzer graticule on it, which is a great feature because if I want to, you know, in the future get myself a a uh, Spectrum Analyzer plugin, I can, and I can actually read it on the display, and obviously, you know, it can be used every day as the normal oscilloscope um, function, but. Uh, with the uh, Graticule like that, I can use it also as the Spectrum Analyzer. Unfortunately, those days, those uh, Spectrum Analyzer plugins, they go for very high prices. So the P7 Phosphor this CRT is fitted with is um, a uh, mm, blue trace with uh, a yellow persistence. Was uh, especially useful for spectrum analyzers because uh, you could have a very slow sweep on the screen and uh, still be able to see the trace. Uh, it's gonna be useful anyways because it's really cool to have a blue trace with yellow persistence but uh, bear in mind that it has a long persistence so it will stay there for longer time. Uh, it might be a problem uh, if you do, you know, use it as a normal oscilloscope. If you have a very fast repetition, uh, you could, you know, have some problems there uh, visualizing your signal. But you know, it's not going to be a problem for me. By the way, this thing is really huge. I mean, it's a full rack. <laughs> It's a full rack uh, length. Uh, oh, there we go. Now you can see it all. But uh, it's really huge and heavy um, because it has a 
linear power supply on the back. So mm, yeah, it's different from uh, the later versions uh, of oscilloscopes Tektronics made, uh, which all, they all fitted. Um, switching power supplies instead of linear. And uh, having a linear power supply on a uh, oscilloscope like this makes repair obviously much much easier. So it, it kind of is a great thing although it's super super heavy so it actually weights uh, something like 15 kilos or even a little bit more. Let's uh, let's uh, get a chew scent and uh, open the sides. That uh, This is the kind of aircraft uh, a side panel that uh, come off this way here. It's really cool. Look at that. Just a quarter turn uh, little screws. And there we go. You can actually see it's super easy to service. All right, you can actually see the, the CRT under this shield. Um, the acceleration voltage is very high because those are very bright CRTs. Mm, and uh, you can actually see this is the uh, vertical uh, uh, driver and this is the horizontal driver. It's, um, it's a mess of wires on the back. There are a few uh, spider webs on the inside. And uh, ooh, what what the hell is this thing? I don't know. Um, unfortunately, on those oscilloscopes, uh, especially on this uh, on those boards, um, the uh, it's a very known uh, uh, failure, uh, which are the tantalum capacitors on those boards, especially on this one. The minus fifty volts. Um, is uh, right here in, the, in this board and is right across those uh, tantalum capacitors which are rated at 50 volts so it's right on the limit I will change those uh, those usually explode or catch fire I don't wanna mess with it so I will clean everything this is it's, this is filthy obviously having a fan on the back means that uh, all the dust can actually come in. I might be working actually. I don't know. I got this thing for 20 euros by the way. So yeah, it was just a <laughs> bargain, but uh, also I don't know. For 20 euros this those just uh, come as crap. So um but I don't see anything obviously wrong with it. So let's see the other side. <laughs> There's a mess of cables there. Uh, but basically, this is the uh, calibration board, and the switches are here. Uh, but there is the basically calibration signal is generated by this board here. This is the readout board with all those uh, custom. Oh my God, there's a bunch of custom Tektronics ICs. Hopefully, none of those is failed. Uh, hopefully. This is the high voltage connection, high voltage power supply under here. And this is the uh, Z-axis. So basically it's the brightness uh, of the display is right on this board. This is the fan. The fan assembly is on the back here and uh, nothing really else. So you can actually see this um, readout PCB as an example, but uh, every PCB is like this. Uh, what is Actually, interesting is that, uh, you know, you can actually see all the uh, custom Tektronics uh, ICs. Um, but what you see, which is interesting, is that everything is socketed. Look at those. Uh, all the ICs are socketed, but also the transistors are socketed. I mean, there, there's uh, little uh, PCB little holes that uh, are soldered on the... Uh, PCB, but uh, the uh, the actual transistor itself is not soldered; it's just socketed. Which is, I mean, it's a great thing for servicing, that's for sure. But uh, you know, over time, perhaps those contacts uh, they they 
not really usually, but uh, sometimes you they could go bad. So yeah, that's the thing. And um, uh, those are single wipe uh, uh, sockets for the ICs, which is not really great. They have a single uh, line of contacts on the uh, side. So yeah, I mean, uh, usually a uh, very common problem is intermittent contacts on uh, on those uh, on those sockets. So it's good good uh, practice to just re-socket everything, or even uh, if you really wanna um, fix once for all the problem, just replace every socket on all the boards to you know solve the intermittent problem. Uh, replace all the sockets uh, with proper dual wipe uh, sockets which uh, grab the little IC leg uh, with both sides. That's the little fan assembly I was talking about. Uh, you can actually see it's right there. A little AC fan on the back that blows fresh air into the uh, past transistors that are on the back. And on the back there is the a low voltage power supply section. Perhaps we're gonna just uh, very gently power it up. I'm really curious to see if this thing still works. All right, so I couldn't resist. Um, I wanna test it out. <laughs> so there we go. All right, so um, everything is connected. I have this meter here reading the uh, AC current. This meter is I have a probe, uh, it's grounded, so I can uh, read the uh, the actual voltages on the board. So let's uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna triple check all the connections. This is good. All right, let's do it. The variac is at zero, so let's try this. Okay, so I'm gonna ramp it up a little bit. So we're drawing soon current. Let's uh, probe the plus 50 volts. We are at three volts. The fan is spinning. We're drawing uh, 26 milliamps. We are at 120 volts. Let's uh, ramp it up. I can hear the uh, the static from the CRT, and oh my god, <laughs> I can see it on the uh, on the camera screen. Oh, I have a trace. I mean, haven't reached. Oh yeah, I have. Let's go up to 220. So this is the full voltage. The light bulb is... Uh, it's alright. It's a little bit uh, light up, but uh, not too much. It's a... It, I have two... Uh, um, 150 watts light bulb in parallel. So it's uh, 300 watts. Because this, uh, this whole thing actually... Um, Mm, requires a lot of current, but um, oh my god, let's see the 50 volts plus 50, it's uh, 49.8, it's perfect. We have a fully working scope. <laughs> I mean, even the readout look, uh, 100 milliseconds, which correspond to the time base. It's uh, 500 microseconds. It's just beautiful. And look at the uh, persistence on the CRT, on the P7 phosphor. Look at that. That is beautiful. It leaves the trace like that. My god, it's very long persistence. Alright, so I'm about to change the, uh, the capacitors on the uh, vertical channel board, which is very interesting. It has this, uh, you know, push-pull configuration with this... Uh, very cute uh, little uh, IC here, which is custom, obviously. 
So, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to find this thing if it uh, uh, if it breaks. But uh, you know, I'm gonna change those um, tantalum capacitors, which are quite prone to uh, spectacular failures. So, yeah, those are uh, one, two, three, and four one microfarad. Uh, 50 volts capacitors. So yeah, I'm gonna change those for uh, nice uh, 63 volts uh, one microfarad capacitors. Those are electrolytic, good brand. Uh, not gonna have, I'm not gonna have uh, problems. The little uh, purple dot here on the side is the positive lead. So yeah, just remember that. And uh, I'm gonna change those. Uh, little caps, so doesn't burst in flame. Yeah, hopefully. Also, something very interesting. Um, actually, uh, I noticed that some, you know, some solder joints are are cracked, which is eh, meh, not really good. So I'm gonna actually um, inspect this board and uh, resolder uh, the cracked. Uh, soldier joints so it won't have any problems also this one I mean jeez alright so I changed all the caps um, those are the four caps and those are the little bastards look at those alright so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna modify this oscilloscope and add the um, the push button illumination mod which is uh, very famous because those um, um, 7600 series oscilloscopes they don't have the 5 volts required to run the uh, the little uh, uh, the little light bulbs on the plugins. So here is a plugin. This is a, a dual channel plugin, and you see there are those nice little uh, push buttons. They should, when you press them, they should illuminate, but uh, it just doesn't work. So in order to perform this mod, you need to take out the power supply uh, section here. There are just uh, six screws on the side, and uh, you just slide this whole unit out carefully. And um, you just follow the, the little manual here. This is... Oh, this is just a, a this is not just a manual for modification this is an official mod from Tektronix how nice is that so the two wires are gonna be connected uh, here to this rectifier which is uh, which is called C8 C8 one it also tells you on the manual um, and then it goes to a regulator I actually made a little uh, L bracket so I could actually mount it inside this uh, this uh, shield here so we'll actually dissipate also the heat and uh, with a two pin connector it goes right under there on uh, there's a little des designation uh, which is P10 and uh, you just connect it there and you're good to go Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Uh, before doing anything, I just want to make sure that uh, it's the correct voltage, so I'm going to measure that. Oh, yeah, it's 13 volts. Yeah, it's 13.5, which is perfectly good. All right. All right, so this is the uh, little uh, regulator. It's just a 7805. And uh, just a little connector. Solder the wires to the uh, the uh, capacitor, the, uh, the C821. And yeah, 
that is um, actually connected here because the uh, the case is ground, so the the actual s chassis is ground, which is common. So yeah, I'm gonna connect it to the main interface now. All right, so I mounted the thing under the uh, inside the actual uh, power supply shield. It's this uh, little bracket right there. And what do you know? That is just just beautiful. Look at that. Have all the uh, little uh, little light bulbs. Huh? That is super cute. Look at that. Oh man. All right. So this is basically it for this uh, beautiful uh, 7603 oscilloscope. Uh, mainframe. It's a beautiful, beautiful oscilloscope, and um, <laughs> I have I have other two of those, and I uh, have to repair another one. I have a bunch of repairs coming up, a uh, bunch of uh, very cool uh, instruments. So yeah, stay tuned. And uh, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.